The other thing we talked about was that, you know, that you, so we talked about HIPAA, we talked about FTC, but you're, you also mentioned to me that there are a growing number of states, right, which is very, now we're moving away from federal regulators to state level privacy laws that are mm -hmm. filling some, some of these gaps. What, what's happening? Yeah, I mean, the fact is, is we have focused a lot on HIPAA traditionally in this space, but I think once you kind of take a step back and look at all the kind of type of consumer health data that are out there, um, there's this idea that that may be the minority of health data. I like this quote, um, health data outside the HIPAA bubble, maybe the majority of health related data from this tech expert here. States are recognizing this. They're recognizing that there's kind of this gap to fill with this specific type of information. Nobody's protecting it. And so they're going to step in. They're going to step in to do that. And and we we sat down before this call and kind of mapped it out. Like, this is the map of the states that have already stepped in and either have, you know, signed or passed legislation or, or stuff that's actually in, in committee. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty growing map of states that are that are doing stuff here. Yeah, this is just a map from the IAPP. I think they update this maybe every month or two. So, I mean, you can see here there's like 19 or 20 states that already have legislation for more, you know, being worked on right now. And I think we're just going to start to see this, you know, filled in. If they keep it green and blue, we'll, we'll continue to see it, you know, expand yeah. in those colors. I mean, I think we would need an entire webinar to talk about each of the states because it's it's pretty in the weeds. But what what yeah. in one in one slide in just a minute or two, like what should people know about these state privacy laws? How should they think about them? Yeah, I think some of the main takeaways from state laws is it's there are fifty of them, as we all know, plus DC. <laughs> and so as we see them, you know, come up with the twenty so we have now, it's really hard to comply because everyone, every state has a different definition of the information, the way it applies. Um, and so you really need to pay attention to what's, you know, created this patchwork effect. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody operates in a vacuum anymore either in maybe one state. Um, you know, they're trying to do business yeah. everywhere. And so we can take away some generalities from the states. I'll talk about California just because that's, you know, every, that's kind of on the top of everyone's mind with the California Privacy Rights Act that was updated in January of last year. That one applies to for-profit entities and they have to meet some other thresholds, which we would see in other states as well if they're operating in the state, affecting that state's residents and consumers. And the other threshold might be something like how much revenue they generate or how many you know pieces of information they share and sell each year based on the number of individuals. What we've seen in California and what we see in these other states as well is that it's really giving a lot of consumers rights to their information. Like I think of this kind of as the power to the consumer stage that everyone's worried about how in individuals know how their own information is being used. So they're giving individuals the right to delete their information. They're giving them opt-in consent requirements in most cases of the mm -hmm. five here, California and Utah are opt-outs, but the other ones are opt-in to share certain types of information, sensitive data. You know, they're saying that individuals can say, don't share my information at all. Like, I have that right. I think we've all started to see the special, you know, banners from California, you know, businesses and the websites we visit. And then another, you know, important thing here, California in particular has a private right of action. And so we'll talk about that on the consumer class action piece. But that's kind of the big piece that's missing from HIPAA in terms of where we see the class actions and enforcement happening is that when there's a violation of HIPAA, an individual can't sue a healthcare entity for violating HIPAA. O only OCR has the enforcement action and some AGs do some things too. But so that leaves individuals to things like the state laws and their consumer class action theories. Yeah, and I, I guess the really quickly, the last piece on on the state laws is some of these state laws have HIPAA exemptions, but the thing that was on my mind is if the court ruling strikes down like a part of HIPAA, like the prescribed combination, what happens to that exemption? Is is now that possibly a concern at the state level? Yeah, so 
it's sort of an exemption, I would say. So what most of these okay. state laws are doing, are, and you know, for the ones we're looking up at the screen there, four out of the five, they're saying a particular type of information is exempt from this. Mm. So the PHI, okay. that health information is not subject to this law, but it doesn't say that the entity itself is exempt from the law. The Virginia one does, but like these four others, for example, where you end up is that these healthcare entities or the vendors, if they're holding PHI, that doesn't apply to these laws. You can't enforce these laws against that information, but you can apply it to anything else that they're holding that meets the definitions under those laws. So that might be employee data, that might be website traffic data. And now that we're in this place where the prescribed combination, that part of information is saying, well, that's not PHI. Okay, if it's not PHI, it doesn't fit under the exemption anymore and we don't have a blanket entity exemption. And so, all right, we kind of just traded one for the other. Yeah, it, it hasn't necessarily been simplified for healthcare organizations. Right, so um, that's why we were talking about before, like, okay, let's just, we won't share IP address or we'll only share IP address, we're good, we'll walk away. That That's why this, you know, really doesn't work, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah.